So in this video, we're going to discuss how do we actually figure out if a stock is undervalued, barely valued, or overvalued. And you could actually use a PEM to figure that out. We could do that especially through our SML, so our security market line. And in this video, we're going to break that down into bits, you know, fun, fun bite-sized pieces that make this much more easy for you. And that's going to empower you to do well on your exam. So as you can see on the screen right now, we have three different prompts that are discussing this concept of being overpriced, undervalued, or, you know, fairly priced. So what we're going to do now, before we do actually anything, we're just going to look at our graph and we're going to get a better feel of what the security market line is all about and how we could figure out if something is underpriced or overpriced. So as you can see, I took the time to make a really cool graph in which you find two sections, well, maybe even three. We have our under price section, we have our fairly valued section, and we have our overpriced section. Now what I want you guys to know is that when we use our formula, which is K equals RF plus beta times our market risk premium, whatever we get as our K will be our indicator to figure out whether that particular stock is either overvalued, undervalued, or fairly valued. And it's literally as simple as that. All we have to do is see whether K is equal to our market or uh, to our expected return of the market okay so if you look at your graph we want to know if k is equal to m okay m being the expected return for the market portfolio all right and typically in under cap m we tell you that that should be the case and stocks should be fairly valued at all times and if a stock is either undervalued or overvalued the market because we're all given the same information will actually correct itself People will figure that out and they will correct themselves because we all have the same information. But with that being said, once we use our function, we will be given a K in return. And we want to be able to compare our K to the market portfolio, all right, to the expected return of the market. So in this case, if K is bigger than the, the expected return of the market, then we know that it's underpriced. The reason why it's underpriced, just think about it is that if we could actually get much more returns, i.e. much more money on a placement or a position, and nobody's actually getting to that idea, well, that would mean that you're actually getting much more money that you deserve. You're getting much more for your buck. And that would mean that the stock is actually underpriced because typically a stock should be giving you the same return as the market return. So if it's giving you more, let's say a point here, then you would know that you're actually making much more returns than what the market is supposed to promise you. Therefore, it's underpriced. You shouldn't be making extra money, okay? So when you think about this idea of something being underpriced or overpriced or even fairly valued, is this idea that people should not typically be compensated for a specific position. People should get exactly what the market expects a stock to give you. So if you actually get more than that, well, hey, there's a problem there. So in this case, we know that if K is bigger than ERM, then we have a underpriced stock. Now, if K is equal to ERM, this is becoming something super interesting for us. Because as I said, under cap M, people have the same level of information. And there's no real way to actually do better than somebody else, technically, such that every stock should be fairly valued. And when a stock is fairly valued, well, the expected return of the market should be equal to the expected return of that stock. Okay, so if K is equal to ERM, that means that we're definitely dealing with something that is fairly valued. And conversely, if K is smaller than ERM, that means that you're not making enough return vis-a-vis -vis what the market expects you to make. That's total, that's problematic because you should be making at least, or if not exactly, the market return. So if K is smaller than ERM, Therefore, it's overpriced because you're spending way too much for something that's giving you less than, than expected, okay? So that's kind of the rationale of what the idea of having something overvalued, undervalued, or fairly valued. So now if we go at our prompts, it becomes very obvious and easy for us to solve these questions because A says that when the expected return of stock A lies above the SML, okay? So that means that K is above the SML at any given point. That would just mean that K, okay, is bigger than ERM. And we know when we look at our, value, at our function right here, we know this. 
it becomes obvious that if k is bigger than ERM, it should be undervalued. Therefore, saying that it's overpriced is not true. This has to be false. Conversely, if we look at B, they're telling you that when the expected return of stock A lies on the SML, it is undervalued. Well, whoa, that's, that's not true because we said that for something to be fairly valued, the expected return of the market has to be equal to K. Okay, that's the scenario in which something would be fairly valued. Okay, and this is exactly the case here because we're telling you that K lies on the SML, so K is equal to the return of the market. Therefore, this has to be fairly valued. And saying that it's undervalued is actually false. So this is no bueno. Therefore, B is false. Now, in terms of C, what we're telling you is that when the expected return of the stock lies under the SML, it is fairly priced. But we know, as we discussed, that if it lies below the SML line, which is the SML line, if it's below the SML line, we know that K is smaller than ERM. Therefore, it's overpriced. So saying that it's actually fairly priced is false. Therefore, this is false. So I hope this gave you a better understanding of the very quick intuition you need to figure out if a stock is overvalued, undervalued, or fairly valued. You want to remember that essentially under Capital, what we're saying is that the market price of a stock should be exactly what the market expects. You should not be getting more returns or less returns. Something should not be fairly valued or overvalued. And if that's the case, the market will actually adjust itself and it would correct itself such that that stock will no longer be overvalued or undervalued. All right. So that's exactly what we did there. We made sense of exam like questions that you may see. So understanding this or putting this onto your cheat sheet would be something super beneficial in my opinion. You should definitely do that if you're allowed to. And once again, I hope this helped. And you should definitely look at my other videos that discuss cap time graph intuition, such as the intercept, the slope, and the efficient frontier. Hopefully this helped.